سلام بچه ها به کانال من خیلی خوش اومدین اسم من مریم هست و من معلم زبان فارسی هستم و در یوتیوب به شما دوستان عزیز فارسی درس می دهم Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mariam and I'm a Persian language instructor. And uh, I wanted to say thank you so much uh, for uh, leaving me very encouraging and motivating comments on uh, some of my videos. Uh, when I really, when I read those comments, they really motivate me and like push me to move for move forward and to make more videos for you guys so thank you so much خیلی ممنون از صمیم قلبم از شما دوستان عزیز تشکر می کنم so we have a new lesson uh, the lesson is sentence structure it's a relatively easy lesson so let's just start the lesson In this lesson, first we are going to go over the sentence structure in Farsi, and then we are going to take a look at a few uh, simple examples, and then we are going to look at these elements here and see how flexible these elements are. Can we move them around in the sentence or not? And then uh, we are also going to very quickly go over the why element, and then we are going to also go over the interrogative sentence structure or word order and then uh, we are going to take a look at around five examples so you can get some practice benefits of knowing the word order or sentence structure overall when you are learning a new language it's very beneficial if you could uh, if you could learn about the word order of that language uh, one of the main benefits of it is that it can really uh, improve your fluency. How? Because uh, you can better sequence your words, you can construct better sentences, you can predict what needs to come next. Do we need to bring the verb now? Do we need to bring the subject now? So it, it can really help you in that area. It can help you to stop thinking about your native language and to stop translating word by word and instead be more flexible, and more adaptable to the word order of the language that you're learning. So that's why in this lesson, we are going to go over the word order or sentence structure in Farsi. Simple sentence structure in Persian, Sahtar Jomle Sade Dar Farsi. Sahtar means structure, Jomle means sentence, Sade means simple. So here we have uh, a very basic and simple sentence structure and it has only three elements and based on these three elements it starts with the subject the sentence then we have the object and then the, we have the verb but in english the sentences start also with the subject but then there's the verb then there's uh, the object so that's the difference between farsi and english all right now let's go over to the next slide to add more elements to it Now let's expand the sentence a little bit more and add more elements to it. For example, we can add a time adverb. The object can be divided into direct object and prepositional object. So we can add a prepositional object to it. And we can also add an adverb of place, for example. So this sentence, man dustam ro didam, now can change to this verb is in past tense so we can add a, a time adverb that belongs to the past which the most common one is diruz yesterday diruz man dustam ro now we need a prepositional object ba madarash adverb of place dar khiyaban didam one more time دیروز من دوستم را با مادرش در خیابان دیدم. So the word order that you see here is uh, the general word order in Farsi. The good news is that this word order is also very flexible. It's not rigid. It's not very strict. Except for one or two elements that are strict. The rest is pretty flexible, so you can play with it, you can move things around. 
First, we are going to take a look at a few other examples, and then we are going to take a look at some of these elements and how flexible we can be with the sentence structure. Let's take a look at a few examples. فردا من این کتاب را به دوستم در کلاس می دهم. So here the verb is, uh, the infinitive is دادن. Here is a present stem. And also uh, the verb دادن in Farsi is a preposition of verb. We give uh, something to someone. So cheesy would be the direct object in کتاب را. And then in is a demonstrative. So it will trigger را because now we are referring to a specific book. And then be dustam, be kasi. So kasi here is dustam. Next one. U dohtarash ra be madrese board. So here we do not have all the elements. Also the subject could be optional too because it's a pronoun. So I can also say dohtarash ra be madrese board. The infinitive is bordan. Cheesy ra be jai bordan. Cheesy, the direct object is dohtarash ra. So it is, uh, we have the possessive suffix, so it will trigger ra. And then be jai, jai would be madrese, be madrese board. Next one, gahi, bache ha, ba ham digar, khub, bazi, mikonan. So the infinitive is bazi kardan, ba kasi, bazi kardan. And then with each other, here in the spoken language, we can also just say ba ham. So we can drop digar. Digar means uh, other. So we can uh, remove that and just say ba ham. It's very common to say that too. Next one. Shirin naqashiyash ra be man nishandad. So nishandadan is also another prepositional verb. And uh, the preposition is to. So in Farsi we show something to someone. چیزی را به کسی نشان دادن. چیزی would be نقاشیش را. And the direct object is um, it has the suffix so it will trigger را. به کسی. کسی would be من. So شیری نقاشیش را به من نشان داد. Here we also don't have all the elements. Next one. سال دیگر شاگردها موسیقی در آموزشگاه یاد خواهند گرفت. So this tense is formal future. It comes from the infinitive yad gereftan. Cheesy ra yad gereftan. Here ra is in a bracket because musiri is very general. It's very, it's, um, we're not talking about uh, a specific type of music. We're just talking about uh, music, musiri. So that's why it's not going to trigger ra. Like, let's say, for example, we wanted to say Iranian music. Then it makes it more specific. Then it would trigger ra. So it would be موسیقی ایرانی را در آموزشگاه یاد خواهند گرفت. Now let's do a very quick comparison of sentence structure in Persian versus English. The first thing you need to know is that this is Farsi. So from right to left, don't go from left to right. Right to left and English is left to right. All right, so in Farsi, the sentence usually starts with the time adverb, but in English, usually it comes at the end. Again, we are saying usually. We're not saying all the time because it depends on the sentence. It depends on, on other elements. This is just a very, very general structure. The second one in Farsi then comes the subject, but in English, the subject comes in the beginning. And then we have the direct object. Then comes the direct object in Farsi. The direct object in English comes after the indirect object. And then in Farsi we have then the indirect object, which as you can see again, it comes after the verb and before the direct object. And then uh, in Farsi we have the place or other adverbs, such as adverb of quality or just other adverbs comes next. In English also it comes a little bit later and then the sentence ends with the verb which in English comes in the second place. So this word order that we learned you can use it as a general reference, you can use it as a guideline. Some people they would like to have a structure and they would like to follow that structure. If it helps you you can follow it but just know that 
and the word order of the elements is more followed or observed in the formal written language and in the spoken language it's not very strict there are rooms for flexibilities you can move around some elements so next we are uh, going to take a look at that before we go over each item let's just go over the sentence first because i will be using the same sentence for the items and i want you to fully understand the sentence here so har mah man farsi be shoma dar youtube dars midaham the first thing you need to know is that dar can also be replaced with ba or as tariqe so i can also say har mah man farsi be shoma با یوتیوب درس می دهم or I can also say هر ماه من فارسی به شما از طریق یوتیوب درس می دهم so either one works here that is more common so I decided to go with در but you can use either one and also the, the verb here درس می دهم درس می دهم it means to teach it comes from the infinitive درس دادن درس دادن درس means lesson دادن means to give and also um, the verb to give in general not to teach to give is a prepositional verb and the preposition is uh, be we give to someone so here we are giving lessons so the same prepositions is also used so in farsi we teach to someone we have another verb to be kasi amuzesh dadan we can also use this one so again we have dadan here the preposition with dadan is be and then but here instead of saying dars we can also say amuzesh amuzesh it means education so it's like literally to give education to someone it means to teach so you can use either one but for this uh, lesson uh, i'm using dars dadan flexibility with time so here again is the word order and usually the time adverb comes in the beginning of the sentence but again the structure is more followed in the written language in the spoken language it's more flexible for example i can also bring it after the subject so here is before this is the subject so before but in this sentence after the subject so i can also say man har mah farsi be shoma dar youtube dars midaham this is also very very commonly said in fact i say it all, all, all the time i usually bring it after the subject or if you want to bring it all the bit later in the sentence that's fine too it doesn't make your sentence incorrect especially if you are um speaking for example your um you are trying to say a sentence and you forgot to bring a time adverb and you are already in the middle of your sentence it's okay you can still bring it you don't need to uh, cut your sentence and start all over again you can just bring it before the verb as long as you bring it before the verb it's okay so i can also say man farsi be shoma dar youtube har mah dars midaham it just changes the emphasis all the bit it changes the tone but it's still correct flexibility with place so according to the structure place comes before the verb but it is also flexible so let's move it around and see how the sentence changes so now i want to bring it in the beginning of the sentence and i want to say dar youtube man har ma farsi be shoma dars midaham so by bringing it in the beginning of the sentence we're actually just adding more emphasis on it so this sentence work, uh, works well if I'm co contradicting the sentence by saying something like در یوتیوب من هر ماه فارسی به شما درس می دهم نه در اینستاگرام So this is one way that it works and uh, also we can uh, move it around Let's, we can bring it after the time adverb and say من هر ماه در یوتیوب فارسی به شما درس می دهم or I can even bring it after the direct object and say من هر ماه فارسی در یوتیوب به شما درس می دهم so you see it's like very flexible so just remember as a uh, rule of thumb the earlier in the sentence it comes the more emphasis is on it flexibility with the order of direct object and prepositional object which is also the indirect object so the indirect object in Farsi always, always gets a preposition. 
In English, the, an indirect object does not get a preposition. But in Farsi, we cannot have an indirect object without a preposition. And the preposition that comes with the indirect object is the preposition that comes with the verb. For example, here, dars mi daham. So dars dadan is the verb. In Farsi, we teach to someone. So the preposition that comes with the indirect object is be. When an indirect object gets a preposition, the name changes to prepositional object. So it's like we need to say, I teach Farsi to you on YouTube every month. But in English, the indirect object does not get a preposition. I teach you Farsi on YouTube every month. You see, between you and teach, there's no preposition. And also, the order in English is very strict. So you cannot say, I teach Farsi you on YouTube every month. This is incorrect. But in Farsi, thank God, it is flexible. So the sentence, I can also say, Har man be shoma Farsi dar YouTube dars midaham. So be shoma can come before the direct object. Not only that, I can also be more flexible. And uh, for example, I can bring Beshoma a little bit earlier and be like, Har mah Beshoma man Farsi dar YouTube dars midaham. When you bring it earlier, you're just changing the emphasis, the focus. Let's move the direct object and see uh, how flexible is the direct object. So I can also bring the direct object before the verb and I can say Har mah man be shoma dar YouTube Farsi dars midaham. So it's in fact, it is actually very common for the direct object to come before the verb. By bringing it before the verb, you are just changing your tone a little bit and you're putting more emphasis on the direct object. Flexibility with the verb. So I know from lesson two, I have been telling you guys that the verb comes at the end of a sentence or at the end of the subordinating clause. But sometimes with some verbs in the spoken language, we don't bring the verb at the end because we speak fast and we just say whatever comes to our head. For example, دیشب خیلی دیر برگشتم خونه. You see, this is the verb before خونه. Or کتابش رو پس ندادم بهش. This is the verb and you see بهش after that. Or for example, کی میرسی اینجا؟ میرسی before اینجا. So there's no rule here that you need to know. There's no formula, nothing. It's just... We sometimes do it in the colloquial language. And uh, my purpose here is to just to make you familiar with also the spoken language because it's important to know the spoken language too. And here on the table on the left side, also uh, you see three sentences. These two are imperative moods and this is subjunctive mood. So it's also common uh, for the imperative mood when a, a verb is in imperative mode or subjunctive mode with some verbs again not all of them not to come at the end for example here like get out in farsi we say boro birun we say go out boro before birun or come over here in farsi we say bia inja so bia before inja or for example let's go to the park tomorrow farda berim park uh, so berim has come before park if you do not know imperative mood and subjunctive mood, don't worry about it. Once I teach these lessons, I will go over this again. This is for those of you who are familiar with these two modes as well. Adding the Y element. Another element that you can add to your sentence structure is the Y element. The Y element provides reason for why you said that sentence. For example here. من فارسی به شما در یوتیوب درس می دهم چون معلم زبان فارسی هستم و درس دادن را دوست دارم. So all this here is the why element. I'm explaining to you why I'm teaching you guys فارسی on YouTube. And also چون here is a conjunction is connecting this clause to this clause. 
There are other terms for chon in Farsi. We can also say chonke, we can say baraye inke, and we can also say zira, and there are some other terms as well. I would say these four here are maybe the most common ones, and um, it's helpful if you know all of them. You don't have to use all of them. You can stick to one and just use that one, but you need to know the other one, so when you hear them, at least you can understand them. And also the word here, Mu'allem, you might have heard of other words for, uh, for teacher. You might have heard of Mudarres, you might have heard of Amuzegar or Ostad. These are also correct. I usually go with Mu'allem because it's like too general and it's easy, so I go with that one. So we will practice the Y element more in the next lesson. Now let's go over the interrogative word order or sentence structure. As you can see here, the interrogative word order is pretty similar to the affirmative word order, except that before the verb, now comes the interrogative word. But this is also very flexible. We are going to go over that. But before that, let's go. Let's quickly review the interrogatives in Farsi. So, chi, k, ki, koja, chetor. Kodum Chera. First, we are going to take a look at this five. Yay. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, this five, this five interrogatives here. And then we are going to also take a look at this two later. The interrogative word order is um, pretty similar to the affirmative word order, except that the interrogative word is usually placed before the verb. Here are a few examples that you can see. In English, the sentence, the interrogative sentence start with the interrogative word. But in Farsi, as you can see, here are the verbs. And these are the interrogatives. They are placed before the verb. But again, this is also very flexible. We can move it around. So in the next following slides, we are going to go uh, to go over each sentence and see uh, how flexible these interrogative words are. Uh, we are going to start with the interrogative chi, and we are going to see how flexible it is. So here we have a question, and then we have an answer. So the question is, what did they eat at the Turkish restaurant in Istanbul? Let's answer it first, and then we're going to come up with a question in Farsi. They had kebab at the Turkish restaurant in Istanbul. And by the way, I know it's like very repetitive. It's like, it's like we're repeating the same thing, but because you guys are learning the word order, so I want to bring all the elements in the sentence so you can just see it just for learning purpose and practice purpose. Other than that, we can just answer kebab. We don't have to say like the whole thing. All right, so the answer in Farsi is Anha dar restoran Turki dar Istanbul baraye nahar kebab khordand. Now we want to come up with this question. So this is the question. Anha dar restoran Turki dar Istanbul baraye nahar chi khordand. So it's the same thing except that now kebab will be replaced by the interrogative. Other than that, it's like the same order. But this is very flexible, like the interrogative chi is very flexible. We can completely move it around. For example, I can also say, On ha chi dar restaurant Turki dar Istanbul bari nahar khordan? Or, I can say, On ha dar restaurant Turki dar Istanbul chi bari nahar khordan? So you see, it's not very strict. The general rule is maybe it's better to come before the verb, but it's very flexible. Um, basically, like the more earlier you bring the interrogative, uh, the more emphasis you're putting on the interrogative. So that's like the general rule. Now let's take a look at the next interrogative, which is the, which is the interrogative K. So K is very similar to key. Um, by just looking at it, it's hard to say uh, is it K or is it key. Because right now you can see the vowel, but in the textbook or when you're reading, you don't see the vowel. So by the context, you would know, uh, is it a key or is it a K? So the question here is, when did you go to the party? We went to the party at night. 
So you see, sharp is being replaced by the interrogative key. Uh, sorry, K. But it is flexible like the other interrogatives. So we can also say شما کی به مهمانی رفتید. Or we can bring in earlier, but then now there's like more emphasis and be like کی شما به مهمانی رفتید. And also with this one, um, we can move sharp the uh, time a little bit earlier. So we can also say ما شب به مهمانی رفتیم. Again, the earlier you bring them, it's like there's more emphasis on it on them. So let's go over to the next interrogative, which is key. Key is who. Who did Neda see at the restaurant? Neda در رستوران کی را دید. So it's کسی را دیدن. That's why we have a here because even though we don't know who, we don't know who that person is, but still, it will still trigger ra because we're still referring to a specific person, not any person on the street. That's why it will still still trigger ra. The answer is Neda saw Amir at the restaurant. Neda در رستوران Amir را دید. So as you can see, this is the same structure as this one, except that now it's being replaced with the interrogative key, which is flexible. So we can also say, Neda kira dar restaurant did? Or we can bring it even earlier and say, Kira neda dar restaurant did? And dar, um, the informal is to, ra, the informal is ro. So it would be the in more informal version would be, Neda to restaurant kira did? Or, Neda kiro tu restaurant did? Or this one, Kiro neda tu restaurant did? Next is the interrogative koja. So the question is, where did Elham park her car? So park kardan is the verb, easy. Elham mashinash ro koja park kard? Remember, we need to have ra because you park something. You don't park yourself. You park your car. So... Machine Nash, her car, so it will trigger raw. Elham park her car near the house. Elham machine Nash ra nazdike khane park kard. So again, nazdike khane will be replaced by koja, which koja is also flexible. So we can bring it earlier and say, Elham koja machine Nash ra park kard. Or we can say, koja elham machine Nash ra park kard. Again, the earlier you... Bring them, though it's like the more emphasis is on them. Now, with the interrogative, kodam and chera, um, the order is a little bit different than the other interrogatives that we just learned. Uh, they come earlier in the sentence. They do not come before the verb. They come earlier. For example, after time or after the subject. It's also a little bit flexible. Maybe it can come before time. In some situation, maybe it can come before the subject. Um, but again, this is just a general uh, general rule you can follow. But just remember, it doesn't come later in the sentence. It just comes earlier in the sentence. For example here, which car do you like the most? To kodam machine ra bishtar dostari? So we do not say machine ra bishtar kodam dostari. It doesn't come here, but it comes in the beginning. And also the informal of kodam is kodum. In the spoken language, we don't say kodam. It's like it's too formal. So we say kudum. So like this sentence informally would be kudum machine ro bishtar dostari. Let's take a look at chera too. Why didn't you talk to your boss in the meeting yesterday? Okay. Diruz, to chera ba raise dar jalase harf nazadi? Or I can also bring it like earlier and say چرا دیروز با رئیس در جلسه حرف نزدی؟ Remember in Farsi we do not talk to someone, we talk with someone. با کسی حرف زدن. So we're done with the grammar part. I hope it was easy. Now let's move on to the uh, practice section of this lesson. Let's start with this example here. So we want to ask, what did your mother buy today from the store? Okay, so mother is mother, buy is kharidan, today is emruz, and store is furushka. 
فروشگاه is made of two parts. فروش and go. فروش is the present stem of the verb فروختن which means to sell and go is a suffix. Uh, when go is attached to a word is either indicating a place or it's indicating time. In this, clay, in this case, it's indicating a place, a place, a place of selling, when a place where you sell stuff. All right, so let's translate this sentence. If you want the more literal one, you can find it here. Emruz madarat az furushgah chi kharit. So we just said earlier that chi is flexible, like the interrogatives are flexible. We can move them around. Let's move it a little bit earlier, after the time adverb, before the subject. Emrus chi madarat as furushka kharid. So when it's moved here, there's just a little bit more emphasis on it. Or let's move it a little bit further. Emrus madarat chi as furushka kharid. So you see, it's flexible. Let's go over to the answer. My mother today bought three kilos of apples from the store for the party. Okay, so three is se. Apple seep and then parties mehmani. Emruz madaram se kilu seep baroy mehmani az furushka kharid. So we said that these uh, component uh, elements here, um, like the object, direct object, the time adverb, they're flexible. We can move them around. So let's pick one, for example, here, as furushka, and let's move this around. Let's put it here. So, emruz madaram as furushka se kilusi bari mehmani kharid. Or we can even move it here and say, emruz madaram se kilusi as furushka bari mehmani kharid. We can do this for the other elements as well. Let's, let me give you one grammar point here. So for sip, we do not need to have ra. Even though kharidan is a transitive verb, we buy something. But here, we're just being very vague. Um, we're, we're just saying three kilos of apples. We're not um, referring to a particular or specific apples, so it will not trigger ra. And also here we have number three, so it's not going to, uh, we don't need to have sibha because in English you see the noun needs to be in plural because you're referring to three kilos of apples. But in Farsi, the number is enough. It's already indicating plural, so the noun stays singular. Let's go over this example. We want to ask, where did you take your daughter yesterday? So the verb to take in Farsi is bordan. We have other verbs for to take. We have also bardoshtan, we have gereftan. They are used in different contexts. Later on, I will uh, make a separate lesson about the verb to take because usually the way it is used in, Eng in Farsi, it's different than the way it is used in English. But for now, just remember, when you take something with you or someone, it doesn't have to be a thing, it could be a person. When you take it with you and you leave with it, you go somewhere, then we use bordan. In this example, a mom yesterday took her daughter and they went to the mall. So we will be using bordan. So daughter is dochter, yesterday diruz. Diruz, shoma dochteretan ra koja bordit? So again, we have the interrogative koja. It has come before the verb. Feel free to move it around. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because then it's going to be repetitive. But you can bring it earlier in the sentence, maybe in the middle of the sentence. Let's just go over the informal because the informal is important. So, um, we can dochteretan uh, for the informal changes to dochteretun. Sorry, dochteretun ra in the informal language changes to either dochteretun ro or dochteretuno. And then bordid in the informal language changes to bordin. So if I want to ask this question again colloquially, then it would be, and you can either say shomo or not say it, doesn't matter. Diruz dochteretun ro koja bordin or diruz dochteretun ro koja bordin. Let's go over to the answer. Yesterday I took my daughter to the mall of Tehran by subway. 
So mall of Tehran would be mall, like a shopping mall, is Markaz Kharid. Markaz means center, Kharid means shopping, so shopping center. And then subway is metro. And then for buy in Farsi, we need to use with. So to, um, I took my daughter to the mall of Tehran with subway. دیروز من دخترم را با مترو به مرکز خرید تهران بردم. So I think this one is pretty clear. If you want to move some elements around, feel free to do that. And uh, let's go over the informal. دخترم را changes either to دخترم رو or دخترم رو. The rest stays pretty much the same. Let me read it again. So دیروز... دخترم رو با مترو به مرکز خرید تهران بردم اور دیروز دخترم رو با مترو به مرکز خرید تهران بردم Another example When are they moving to their new apartment? So to move is نقل مکان کردن نقل has different meanings Here it means transfer And مکان یعنی place so to do transferring place, it means to move. You might have heard of other verbs such as asbab keshi kardan or jabaja shodan. Those are correct too. You can use those. And new is jadi. The apartment is apartment. Anha be apartment jadidashan ke nagl makan mikonand. Now let's move K to a little bit earlier in the sentence. So we can also say on ha K ba apartman jadidashan nagl makan mikonan. So now there's like more emphasis on the on the interrogative. So jadidashan uh, here the suffix shan needs to go with the modifier, not with apartment. We do not say apartman shan jadid. Because jadid is a modifier and it belongs to the noun apartment, so the uh, suffix needs to go with the modifier. If there's more than one modifier, then it goes with the last one. So let's go over the informal. Anha changes to unha, and then jadideshan in the spoken language changes to jadideshun. So alef changes to u. And then mikonand, mikonan. I'm going to read it one more time. اونا کی به آپارتمان جدیدشون نقل مکان میکنن؟ And the answer, I think they will be moving to their new apartment this weekend. Okay, so uh, to think is فکر کردن and the weekend is آخر هفته. آخر means end. هفته means uh, week. So end of the week. فکر میکنم آنها آخر هفته به آپارتمان جدیدشان نقل مکان می کنند. So I think this one pretty clear. Feel free to move some elements if you want. I'm not going to do it because it's going to become repetitive. Let's just go over the informal. آنها changes to اونها. And then جدیدشان جدیدشون می کنند می کنند. I'm going to read it one more time. فکر می کنم اونا آخر هفته به آپارتمان جدیدشون نقل مکان می کنن. Next example. Where are you going for vacation this year? So to go رفتن and vacation is تعطیلات. تعطیلات. And this year is امسال. So we do not say این سال. We say امسال. امسال شما برای تعطیلات کجا می روید؟ Let's move Koja a little bit earlier to put more emphasis on the question. So, Emsal, Shoma Koja Bare Tatilot Miravit. Now, let's go over the informal form. So, the only thing that changes is Miravit. Miravit is too formal. We don't say that in the spoken language. In the spoken language, it's very common to say Mirin. Mirin. So, Emsal, Shoma Koja Bare Tatilot Mirin. The answer is, I still don't know, but last year my family and I traveled to Europe. Okay, so still is hanuz, to know is donestan. 
but here you need to be careful because donestan is tricky to know information is donestan to know a person or a thing is shanohtan for example to know uh, to know a book or to know a movie then that will be shanohtan and then to know a skill for example how to play the guitar or uh, how to cook then it would be balad budan so here we need to go with donestan because we're referring to information and then uh, family is khanavade travel safar kardan and europe is urupa hanuz nemidanam vali parsal man va khanavade am baraye ta'tilat be urupa safar kardim okay so i think it's pretty clear uh, let's see what changes in the informal language. So, nemidanam in the spoken language we say nemidunam. So, hanuz nemidunam. And then um, manva. So, va in the spoken language is pronounced o. So, mano. Khanavade am. We say it a little bit faster. It changes to like khunavadam. Khunavadam. And what else? That's it. So, I'm going to read it one more time. هنوز نمیدونم ولی پارسال من و خانواده ام برای تعطیلات به اروپا سفر کردیم. Last example for this lesson. Why do you always argue with your boss at the office? So always as همیشه argue is بحث کردن با کسی بحث کردن. And then boss is رئیس office اداره. چرا همیشه تو با رئیست در اداره بحث می کنی؟ We can bring چرا a little bit further, put it here for example and say همیشه تو چرا با رئیست در اداره بحث می کنی؟ The informal of در is to. Let's go over to the answer. My boss and I always argue with each other at the office because we have difference of opinion. All right. So each other is ham digar. Digar means uh, other. And ham means um, both, likewise, same, each. It has, it has different meanings. And then uh, what else? Because it's strong and difference is ikhtilaf. Ikhtilaf. Opinion is nazar. Nazar. من و رئیسم همیشه با همدیگر در اداره بحث می کنیم چون اختلاف نظر داریم. So I think again it's pretty much clear. We do not need to say the whole thing again. We can, we can just use, we can just answer the question and say چون اختلاف نظر داریم. But here we're practicing. That's why it, sound, it seems a little bit repetitive. Now, I think the rest is pretty clear. We can, um, this is so the Y element that is added. Let's go over the informal now. So, hamdigar in the spoken language is either hamdige, so digar changes to dige, or we also, we can just say ham. So, by saying ham, it's also implying each other. And then we said dar changes to to. The rest stays the same. So I'm going to read it one more time. And man va changes to manu. So manu raisam hamishe ba ham tu edare bas mikonim chon ekhtalaf nazar darim. Be entahay dars residim. Mamnun az inke ba man hamrahi kardin. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, any comment, please uh, leave it in the comment section. Also, I would love to see some of your sentences. Uh, if you could write me a sentence, it doesn't need to have all the elements that we learned today. Maybe a shorter sentence, that's fine. But I would love to see some of your sentences. I can correct them for you and I can use them in my next coming lesson. All right, so I'll see you guys uh, in the next lesson. Fe'elan, Hafez.